Well, hello and welcome to a very special edition of Live in the Hive, the online magazine show dedicated to theatre across Greater Manchester. I'm Michelle Eagleton and for the next half an hour, I'm going to be shining a spotlight on one of the most critically acclaimed national theatre productions, The Ocean at the End of the Lane. It's all very exciting because it is touring across the UK and Ireland and the first stop is, yes, you guessed it, here in Salford. It's going to be at the Lowry in December. So on tonight's show, we have got a number of people who are involved in this exciting production. Yes, we're going to be chatting to the actress Finty Williams. She's going to be telling me about her role in the ocean at the end of the lane. And if that wasn't enough, I get to chat to the associate puppetry director, Gareth Allard, because the puppets in this show are absolutely unbelievable. I don't wanna to give too much away at all, but we are gonna have a really exciting night this evening. So do stay with us if you are on the Live in the Hive Facebook page or you're watching on the Isle of Manchester Facebook page. First things first though, you need to see a bit of the action, don't you? Well, you ask and we deliver here at Live in the Hive. Take a look at this. I like stories. Peter Pan? Alice in Wonderland? Nothing looks like what it is on the inside. What makes you who you are? Your face or what you do? There's things what lurk out there. <laughs> Can you be brave? This? It isn't pretend, it is real. All of it was dreamed into existence. Go away! Give me my boy! No, you stay out, stay out! Will anything ever be like it was before? Is so thrilling it kind of leaves you on a cliffhanger wanting more doesn't it well don't worry there's no spoilers on live in the hive but i did get the chance earlier this week to catch up with one of the stars of the show i had the pleasure of chatting to the wonderful actress finty williams and she told me a little bit more about what we can expect I am so excited about this production coming to Salford. I saw it in London, in the West End. It's just phenomenal. I mean, it's a feast for the eyes. How does it feel for you being in this production? I know you're in rehearsals at the moment, but it must be an incredibly exciting feeling to be bringing this to stage on tour. It's really exciting and, and I feel incredibly lucky to be in it. And what's really nice about my part in it is that I do sort of quite set contained scenes and then I get to sit there and watch it. And I mean, it's, it's so phenomenally exciting watching, yeah. it all, watching it all sort of develop in front of you. Because you play old Mrs. Hemstock and I, mm -hmm. I don't want to give too much away about her, but... She is quite a character. And when we say old, she's yeah. very old. Yeah, is she's a billion fantasy? years old. Yeah, I yeah. know. So physically, yeah. that must be challenging as an actress to kind of get those movements and get that feel of her. It is, it is. But Katie Rudd, who's directed it, very much wants to retain that thing that a lot of old people have of having quite a childlike quality to them um so i i hope i'm getting it right i mean you know i i turned 50 in september and got offered the part of a billion year old woman so i don't know quite what that says about me <laughs> that, that's really nice of them to say finty the time yeah. is right you'll be good in this role yeah you're so old now that you can play this part <laughs> Oh, but it's a very nice, rich character. Like I say, 
it's hard not to give it away but i would i would say if i were to put this show in a nutshell it's kind of the mixture between imagination and reality yeah. there's a lot of emotion in it and as well kind of friendship and and grief yeah i think i think you you're absolutely spot on i think it's a story about um a very real thing that happens to a young boy um and and how a fantastical world allows him to explore the feelings of grief and loss and friendship and acceptance um i think yeah it's really hard not to not to give any of it away but it is I a think that's spectacle. the best way to describe it it is kind of like all multi-sensory because you've got the powerfulness of of the acting but with this you've also got kind of the lighting the sound and the puppets what was your first reaction to kind of getting used to those puppets Vinti? well i don't i i personally don't have very i don't have to work any of the puppets which is probably a very good thing um but, but you see them don't you you're very but i see them i i see them and that's like it's beyond exciting and it's beyond a privilege to be working with people who just have the ability to bring these things to life and make it so that you don't look at the person working it you just look at the puppet but you know we did a run through of the first half uh i think a week ago and i i mean i just I, i forgot that i was sitting in a rehearsal room watching people that i knew i got so excited that at one point i shouted out <laughs> but i got so involved in it and it's breathtaking the scale of these puppets the brilliance of you know gareth and jess who put the movement and the puppets together the, the astonishing brilliance of the people who work them i mean they're they're in a, a different league i've called them the super people oh yeah absolutely i mean that reminds me of when i went to see it you said you called out in rehearsals i jumped out of my seat at one particular moment and yeah. you went to see it didn't you in the west end before i did because board. a very good friend of mine was playing Ginny, so yeah. my daughter in the play a very dear friend of mine was playing her so Gosh. So what was that like? What were your first impressions then of seeing it before coming on board? Were you blown away? So I, I didn't know that I was going to be part of it this year. I saw it, I think, at the beginning of last year. And uh, I just, I, I had the same feeling that I had when I saw War Horse, that your head tells you that what you're looking at are puppets and people working them, but your heart totally takes over and tells you that it's totally real and and that's what i think is so vitally important about this this play and taking this play on tour because i think i think a lot of us have got very used to over the past two years and i totally include myself in watching films where we accept cgi and all the the clever and brilliant things that film and television can do we've accepted it much more and so when you come to the theatre, you have to work that little bit harder to, to sort of meet it halfway. But then, I mean, I say you've got to work harder. I, I, I just, I literally am blown away by it. And I'm in it. I'm so lucky. There is nothing like that theatre experience. And I think it just, it takes you to another world when you're watching something at the theatre. And it's so incredible that we got it back after COVID yeah. and and for me being in the north when we see productions like this and this standard go on tour it gives people the opportunity that may not get to go to London to see these shows absolutely and I think you know I think I think for a lot of younger people I think it's a really important story to watch and and also, I love the fact that, you know, you can't sit and film it or you can't be on your phone whilst you're watching it. You have to give it your full attention. Yeah. And, and, and that you and however many people are in that theatre have that one experience that one night. Because it won't be the same the next night. No, 
No, absolutely. And we get you here in Salford. Have you ever been to the Lowry before, Finty? I've never been to the Lowry, but my dad was born in Salford. Oh, fantastic. Because yeah. of course, what your dad, Michael Williams, an incredible, incredible actor. Well, do you know what? I thought he was special. That's because he's from Salford. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely is. Oh, yeah. wow. So, so I'm really know? looking forward to going back. Did you ever get to spend time with him in Salford and, and, and visit? Did he did he ever get to return, do you think? Uh, he did. I know he did, but I never went with him. Um, so it, it's a kind of bittersweet thing. I wish that I could know where he lived and, you know, be able to visit. He'd have loved the Lowry and the fact then that we get that kind of arts because I imagine growing up, you know, at that time in Salford, there there wasn't as many opportunities for the arts. Yeah, I don't think there were at all. Which is amazing. Um, I've got to mention your mum as well, because I'm sure she'll be proud as punch to come and see you. I believe Little Bird told me she might be visiting you in Bath. Am I right, Finty? I think so. I think, <laughs> I think she'll come and stay with me in Bath um, and see the show. It's been very hard. You know, she. I speak to her every evening. She's like, what have you done today? And you go, well, I could tell you what I've done today, but A, you wouldn't understand it, and B, I don't want to spoil it because she never saw it, so. Yeah, you can't. You can't give the game away. You need that, no. that first reaction. Is it? Is it hard having your mum watch you and kind of aligns with the because of, you know, the, the fact that she is one of the, the most well-respected actresses that we've got over here. It's... Um, well, very sadly, she can't see anymore. Uh, so I couldn't run lines with her. But when I used to, I, I learned quite early on that um, she used to give quite a few notes. <laughs> so um, I, I, I learned quite early on not to do that. But uh, it, it's an just like for everybody when their mama comes to see them do something uh it's it's a wonderful thing and it's a huge privilege and um i guess the only thing that's a bit different that i've i've only ever noticed is that if i'm doing a comedy that depending on the size of the theater people sort of don't laugh until they see or hear her laugh it's a very odd phenomena. I can't describe it in any other way, but it, it is true. Oh, uh, well, I'm glad it's not a comedy. But yeah, it's not a comedy. It's, it's definitely, definitely not a comedy. It's definitely not a comedy. Although, I've got to say, I did laugh at you all in the current Louis Theroux documentary. I've got to say, doing the TikTok in the back garden, it yeah. was just a genius, genius moment. Is Louis Theroux now your best friend, Finty? Uh, I would like him to be my best friend. Yes. He's uh, nine as well. He's, yeah, absolutely. He's a really, really nice person. And I I sat at home and, and watched the documentary. It was actually, it was the night my son moved to his first flat. So I packed him up and packed him off. And then I sat and watched the Louis Theroux documentary. And uh, my boyfriend came in about 20 minutes after it had started and said, Darling, do you really think this is a good idea for you to be watching this tonight? Because I was just howling with tears. Yeah. But I think he really captured something about Ma that, well, the best way I can put it is that that what he captured was the person I know. Yeah, I, I absolutely, having watched it myself, I was just like, it was joyous. Yeah. It was joyous to see her and kind of, real if if that makes sense it really Total sense. i tell you what she is so quick so quick oh yeah she may not be able to see but nothing gets past her oh i think the parrot got too much airtime personally but there we go yeah but you gotta love a parrot you know you gotta love a parrot <laughs> I am still laughing about that parrot. Oh, me and Finty had far too much fun there, putting the world to right, having a good old chinwag, and of course, talking about the show, The Ocean at the End of the Lane. I cannot wait to see her starring as old Mrs. Henstock. She is going to be 
absolutely brilliant. And don't forget, if you want to see her in that show, it is here from December all the way through to next year. Tickets are on sale now, and it's just around the corner at the Lowry in Salford, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, not only is Finty starring in this production, but a name that you will recognise as well, Charlie Brooks, star of stage and screen. If you're an EastEnders fan, of course, you're going to know her as Janine. In this production, she's playing the role of Ursula. And I have got a special message right here for you if you are coming to see the show. Hi, Charlie Brooks here. We are all currently in rehearsals for the ocean at the end of the lane and we can't wait to come to the Lowry in Salford from December 12th. So hopefully we will all see you there. Oh, the lovely Charlie Brooks there, busy in rehearsals for her role as Ursula in this production. Now, I'm not going to give too much away about that character, but what I will say is she's not as she seems to be. That's all you're getting. No spoilers here on Live in the Hive, but do watch out for her. And also, watch out for the puppets, because now we're going to take a look at my interview with the wonderful Gareth Allard. Now, the puppets in Ocean at the end of the lane are unbelievable. And he is one of the people that is in charge of making them come to life before our very eyes. He's Associate Puppetry Director. And of course, I need to know what it is like for him to be in a production just like this one. I feel like I've got the best job in the world right now. I love this play. I love this production. I think it's such an exciting evening at the theatre. So I'm the associate puppetry director. So I get to um, be part of the creative team, bringing this incredible story to life. We have a really exciting company of people. It feels like this tour that we're putting together, opening at the Lowrium, um, is, is like an evolution of this production, building on uh, the original, the West End, and then now for a tour, it feels like a really exciting time to be uh, telling this story and putting on this play. And what an exciting role for you to have on this, because having seen it myself, I know just how incredible the puppetry is. I mean, I I was blown away, Gareth. Oh, well, that's very kind. Yeah, the puppetry is um, puppetry is fascinating. You know, it, re it requires real generosity. I sort of got brought into the puppetry world via another national theatre production, War Horse, and I was fascinated by how you take an inanimate object, the audience know that it's not really alive, but through some simple principles and techniques, you can convince the audience that this inanimate object is more alive than the performer in some way, that it's worthy of their attention. And we've got some really exciting puppetry challenges in the ocean at the end of the lane um, to help bring to life either Neil Gaiman-esque creatures from another world or another universe, or perhaps um, versions of some of the human characters. I, won't I don't want to give too much away, but no. there's really exciting puppetry challenges. And it's one of the things I'm drawn to this production. It's, it's got so many other disciplines, illusion, puppetry, movement, beautiful composition, sound, lighting, costume. It, it comes together and we all collaborate. And if we, if we work well, it, it, it resonates greater than the sum of its parts. You know, like Katie um, Rudd, our director, she describes this, this production as a, a love letter to theatre. And it really feels like that. It's got all these amazing disciplines that come together to tell this story. And I think it's a really exciting evening if you're an avid theatre goer or you've never watched a play on stage. I think it's a really, you know, it's an exciting uh, play to see. If ever you were to get lost in a production i think this is the one you are transported into this world where imagination kind of meets reality and yeah. everything is kind of like it's a feast for the eyes and you know you're talking about those puppets it's no mean feat because some of them are about 12 foot aren't they yeah so the scale some of the puppets go from you know this scale, I know I'm going off screen here, but but you know, maybe half human size or a quarter human size to a creature that can occupy, you know, the majority of the stage. Um, all the while convincing the audience that this is living, it is mm -hmm. thinking, it is feeling, and it's 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 a character in the story like any other 
character you know you convinced um, me because honestly there was a moment in it i'm not going to spoil where i just jumped out of my seat <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's there's moments where we can be high status kind of impactful you've got lighting and sound um all supporting the dramatic stakes and there is some yeah there's some thrilling moments where i get to help construct which is a uh, yeah, best job in the world, like I said. You know, I just love it so Where much. Where do you start though, Gareth? I've got to say, it's kind of like, we see the end product, mm -hmm. but it must be like, whoa. You know, when you get a book like this and of like the cult status, I think there must be a amount of pressure to, to get it right. Yeah, I mean, when I, I joined the production um, for the, the West End version, and I do remember reading the book, thinking, wow, you know, Neil Gaiman's novel, thinking, this is incredible. How do you put that on the stage? And then I read Joel Horwood's adaptation, the, the, the script that we work from, and I thought, well, that's very clever. And then I became part of the creative team and started to discover ways in which they brought it to life at the Dorfman Theatre, at the National Theatre, when it was first performed. And I mean, yeah, it's so clever and really exciting. But I think you, you kind of, like with any theatre, you break it down step by step. So with puppetry specifically, it needs to be a group of people that can work physically, that trust each other, that listen to each other. Um, and then you start to incorporate puppetry principles, like if you can get your puppet to breathe. A sense of breath will consciously and subconsciously convince the audience that this is living and thinking. And then there's simple things, which I know is a bit daft, but like focus. You know, if I, as a, as, as a puppeteer, place my eye line on the puppet, if you, the audience, look at me, your focus is bounced onto the puppet. So slowly but surely, I start to disappear even though I'm definitely visible on stage. So you're shifting the audience's attention. And then there's things like muscularity and weight and, you know, convincing the audience how this creature responds to gravity like any human or animal would. And it's just a kind of building blocks. And then you're constantly refining it. And that goes across all disciplines, actually, in the play. We're always trying to building blocks, construct and refine it and hone it to get closer and closer to the story that we're telling and the experience that the audience are having. Because um, that is ultimately King and Queen is the story and the impact and the journey that the audience are go, go on along with our characters. There is so much that goes into that. For me as well, the movement was so important and getting that movement right, because it is very physical that, you know, the people that are controlling these puppets, it must be quite an exhausting job, really, because they're the ones that, like you say, you kind of got had their attention and their senses all the time. Yeah, our associate movement director, Jess Williams, she leads a thorough warm up and workout every single morning. So we're in week five of rehearsals and we, we rehearse Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday and every single morning for a good hour. It's warm up and working out and, and strengthening and conditioning so that we are using our bodies correctly and that we build, build up the strength and stamina to tell this story. Um, it also, with puppetry, it requires huge generosity um, because you're gonna work extremely hard in, in kind of, you know, in all your talent and charisma and brilliance, but you, if you do your job correctly, the audience will forget you're there. Yeah. You know, it's an amazing kind of flip that you're gonna give so much in the hope that you aren't noticed. Well, you know, that, that's, why, that's why I loved in this year's Olivier Awards that the whole team behind the lion in kind of the uh, life yeah. of Kai, is it a tiger or lion? It's a tiger. A, a tiger, yeah. A tiger, isn't it? Yeah. They picked up an award because I just yeah. thought, why shouldn't they? Why have people not got that yeah. before? Because it is just incredible what, what happens now with puppetry. Yeah, so Finn Cordwell, who's the puppet director for Life of Pi, he's also the puppet director for Ocean at the End of the Lane, and I'm his associate. Wow. And so I, I learn so much from Finn and watching the way he works. And the, it was brilliant that the industry has, in that moment with, with the Olivier Awards and, and the puppeteers operating, the Tiger, they recognising that puppetry, it, it's a bit like... It's a bit like a musician picking up an instrument. It enables something to happen. When a, pu when a puppeteer picks up a puppet, something greater than those two constituent parts happens. And when you're mastering the technique, 
it becomes like any acting responsibility. It, it requires that detail. So it's brilliant that um, detail and investment. So it's fantastic that the the industry is recognizing um, the the importance of that responsibility. It's like any other acting role. And I think that's a challenge for puppetry now to really, it's not just about bringing something convincing the audience that it's alive it's it's puppetry uh delivering as detailed a character arc in a story as you would hope any human would and that i mean actually thinking about it that possibly is what makes you so good at what you do because you began as an actor didn't you that's you know what you studied first so do you feel you take that through in in what you do now going forward yeah, absolutely. I, I, my experience as an actor, and, and as an actor, I was in this type of world, this type, this physical, devised ensemble storytelling world. And when I'm directing now, I definitely have, um, how to say it, almost like two TV channels in my head. I have the wide shot, what's the audience experiencing? But then I have the other channel, which kind of puts me in it. I imagine if I got given that responsibility, what would I need to feel supported? And so I guess that comes from my experience having performed in this type of work that, that I, when I support and facilitate and have that leadership role of the creative team, I'm thinking, what is it like to be in that or to do that responsibility and how can I help scaffold that so they feel like they trust each other, they're listening to each other, they are safe and empowered to tell the story. Um, so I definitely have those two kind of TV channels. No, I think that that makes it so much better to be able to kind of know those those kind of things. But my main question, I've got to ask this, what does Neil Gaiman think of the puppets? Because, you know, you bring his story to the stage. Has he had that much input in it? And kind of what was his first reaction? Yeah, so speaking from Katie it's to Katie Rudd, the director, and Joel Hall with the who adapted it, the uh, the novel, um, and their experience of approaching Neil for the first time, just totally supportive, totally supportive, and visited the room in initial R and D like uh, workshops, and then in the rehearsal period, and then Neil came along to the West End version as well, and just so supportive. I mean, it's definitely you know you read his work and you read the book and it's so imaginative and so creative and you know the narrative you know it's it starts with a man who remembers um a, a pond at a farm by where he used to grow up and then he's we he's tr goes straight back to his 12th birthday and then realizes that pond isn't a pond it's an ocean and that the, the characters kind of survival is is down to them dealing with these ancient forces and it's such an incredible imaginative narrative so to put that on stage theatrically such a huge challenge but he's so supportive and he's on our side for sure in terms of the choices we're making and, and you know it, i feel so fortunate to kind of have inherited this responsibility and to be part of the creative team because we're, we're all greater than the sum of our parts we're better together because we all collaborate and you know it's not like puppetry starts and ends here and the movement yeah. and the illusion we all you know work together to help bring a Neil Gaiman story to life. It's incredible what they do with the puppetry in the ocean at the end of the lane and Gareth Allard there was brilliant to chat to just to find out about all the hard work that goes into it it's truly amazing and as Gareth said it does feel like those puppies are real, trust me. Now, if you want to go and see it, all you have to do is head to the Lowry website. Of course, it's at the Lowry in Salford through December, all the way through to January. So do not miss it. It's a great alternative for a festive show if you want something a bit different. And if you want to go and see productions across Greater Manchester and want to find out what's on, well, there is one website to head to. Go to I Love Manchester. It's got all of them that you need to know, plus what's going on in our fair city. And of course, don't forget, we are here every week on Live in the High Facebook and I Love Manchester Facebook. And you can also follow us on socials. Come on, you know you want to. Give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter at Live in the Hive 21. And of course, we will be back next week, next Sunday, right here in the Hive for more 
theatre action. So until then, have a great week and I'll see you Sunday.